This video is about section 1.2 in the notes. Just as a reminder, these videos are designed to be used after you have read the section in the notes. So if you haven't read section 1.2 yet, go and do that uh, and come back to the video once you've done so. OK, so what we're going to look at in section 1.2 is integration over box regions. And these are the types of regions you looked at in 1M1 last year where you were just integrating over a rectangle. And what you learned is that suppose we've got some rectangle D uh, and that rectangle D is A, B cross C, D. Let's just remind ourselves what this means. If we've got A, B times C, D like this, this means that the value of X is between A and B. And it means that the value of Y is between C and D and d so that's what this uh this notation means and so that's just that we've got a rectangle make sure i'm not drawing it on top of my face uh we've just got a rectangle that is that goes from a to b in x and from c to d in y so if we've got some domain d which is the thing that we're integrating over here, then our integral of f of xy dx dy, which we could just as well write as f of xy dA, uh, that's equal to the integral from a to b of f x y dx inside the integral from c to d of uh, with respect to dy, or we can equally write it as the integral from c to d f of xy dy inside an integral from a to b of x and both of these produce exactly the same result and so that's a common property that we'll see that flipping the order of these integrals is usually something that you can uh, you can do and it's something we can always do if our integral is a box region so let's do our first worked example uh, Let's suppose the function we want to integrate over is e to the 2x plus y, some function of x and y, and we want to integrate this over the domain 0, 1 uh, cross 0, 3. So let's have a look at that. So we're looking here at example uh, 1.2.1, and we want to calculate... the double integral of e to the 2x plus y dA where d is equal to 0, 1 cross 0, 3. So let's just sketch out what our domain of integration looks like it goes from 0 to 1 in x and it goes from 0 to 3 in y so that's what our domain d actually looks like and how can we evaluate this well this is equal to the integral from 0 to 3 the integral from 0 to 1 e to the 2x plus y dx dy and let's just underline some things the x integral limits go on the x the y integral limits 0 and 3 go with the y so how do we actually go about evaluating this well we have to do the inner integral first and that's always true uh, so this inner integral so I'll just keep on writing the outer integral uh, like this. What's this inner integral? Well, I just have to integrate e to the 2x plus y. Remember that y is a constant as far as the inner integral is concerned. And so this is just going to give me e to the y and then the integral of e to the 2x, which is e to the 2x over 2. And that's evaluated between 0 and 1. And this is 
the integral from 0 to 3, well, let's evaluate this. We can actually take the e to the y out, and we get e to the 2x over 2 when x is 1 gives us e to the 2 over 2 minus e to the 2x over 2 when x is 0 gives us minus 1 half dy. Okay, so now we want to integrate this. Everything in the brackets here is actually a constant, and so we could take that outside the integral. So this is e squared minus 1 over 2, just to represent that bracket in a slightly different way, times the integral of e to the y. Well, the integral of e to the y is just e to the y. I'm evaluating that between 0 and 3, and this gives me e squared minus 1 times e to the 3 minus 1 all over 2. So that's our answer for how to do this integral. This turns out to be somewhere around 60.9 and so on. So that's our answer for this integral. Now we made a choice here because when I wrote down this integral into converting the dA into dx and dy, I made the choice to integrate the x on the inside and the y on the outside. Because this is a box region, the definition of a box region is that the coordinate values on the limits are constant. So we've got four constants for our two sets of limits. Because of that, we can always switch around the x and y. And so we could actually try this another way where we integrate with respect to y on the inside. So we could also try try the integral uh, from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 3. Still got the same integrand, e to the 2x plus y. But now we've got dy dx, and we should get precisely the same value for this. So let's try that out. This is equal to the integral from 0 to 1. Well, we're just doing the y integral first now. So the e to the 2x looks like a constant. So we've got an e to the 2x times, again, integrating e to the y gives us just uh, e to the y that between 0 and 3 dx that's equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the 2x e cubed minus 1 dx and then I can take the e cubed minus 1 out uh, not like that though e cubed minus 1 times the integral of e to the 2x, which gives me e to the 2x over 2 between 0 and 1. And this gives me, obviously, the same answer as we had before, because this is going to the half I can take out the front. I've then got an e cubed minus 1. And from this integral here, an e squared minus 1, which is the same as before. So we can integrate these uh, regions either way round, and whichever way round we try it, we get the same result. Now, the procedure for doing this in three dimensions is entirely analogous. So let's suppose we've got a box that's A, B, C, D, A, B, cross C, D, cross P, Q. This is just a short shorthand way of writing that X is between A and B, Y is between C and D, and Z is between P and Q. And in just the same way that we could switch around the integral, the order of the integration, and we still got the same answer in two dimensions, we can do exactly the same thing in three dimensions, except in three dimensions, we obviously have three integrals stacked inside one another, one for the x, one for the y, and one for the z. And the number of ways in which we can flip around the x and the y and the z integrals is much larger. So we've got six different ways of doing it. I'm just showing the first three here because they all it's, it's clear what uh, how the pattern continues. 
But so we can have the x integral first and then yz, y on the y in the inside and then xz, or the y in the inside and then zx, whichever way around we like. We obviously have to make sure that the appropriate limits correspond to the appropriate integral. And so when I switch around the limits here, or, or the integrals here, I'm obviously switching around the limits too. So this is just uh, much like much the same as what we've just done in two dimensions. And so there's a second worked example, which is about how we can uh, how we can do this in three dimensions. So here we're looking at the box naught one minus a half naught and naught third, giving us the limits for x, y and z. And we're asked to evaluate the integral of x plus two y plus three z all squared dx dy dz and we're asked to do it in two of the six possible ways one of which is first x then y then z and the second one is y then z then x so i'm going to do the x y then z one here and in the exercise sheet you'll do the y z and x and you can verify yourself that it gives the same answer so let's have a look at that So this is example 1.2.2 in the notes. And we are asked to integrate a triple integral over some box W of the quantity x plus 2y plus 3z all squared dx dy dz for w is the set 0 to 1 in x minus 1 half to 0 in y and 0 to 1 third in z. So let's call this quantity i is the answer we want. This all we have to do is write out our three integrals and put the appropriate limits in. So x plus 2y plus 3z all squared is our integrand. We're integrating, we're told to do first the x integral, then the y, then the z. So we'll do dx, dy, dz. But we can put in the appropriate limits here for x, which goes from 0 to 1, from y, which goes from minus 1 half to 0, and from z, which goes from naught to a third. So let's see how this is going to work out. We have to do the x integral first, because we always have to start with the inside integral. So I'll just write out the uh, y and z integrals. And then I've got to integrate this thing with respect to x. So I can treat this uh, a bit like a single variable giving me x plus 2y plus 3z or cubed over 3 evaluated between x is 0 and x is 1. And then I've still got my dy and my dz integrals on the outside. And this is just equal to Well, let's evaluate this with x is equal to 1, gives us 2y plus 3z all cubed over 3, uh, 1 plus 2y plus 3z cubed over 3, minus the same thing with x is 0, minus 2y plus 3z cubed over 3. So this is going to give me a third, 1 plus 2y plus 3z cubed minus 2y plus 3z cubed dy dz. So it's now time to do the y integral. So let's do that one. As we'd expect, the integrand now no longer depends on x because we've dealt with all of the x dependence. So now we just have to integrate this thing with respect to y and we can do much the same trick as we did before. We have to uh, multiply oh sorry we can treat the variables here as a 
a single kind of unit and so the cubed goes to the that quantity to the 4 over 4 and so this is going to give me I'll take the third out of the front here this is going to give me 1 plus 2y plus 3z to the 4 over 4 but there's an additional factor of 2 that we have to divide by because it's a 2y in there same thing here we have 2y plus 3z to the 4 over 4 but there's an additional factor of 2 in there as well and so actually our denominator here uh, oh, let me, is going to be 24 because it's a now what do I need to do I need to put some brackets around there to make that make sense so uh, we've got actually a whole a, a denominator on the whole thing so what I'm going to do is uh, get rid of this 3 right of 24 and then I can get rid of the 8 which I've got there just to make that a little bit more uh, straightforward so now I've got to evaluate this at y is naught and y is a half and that I can do in exactly the same way as we did before so I've still got my z integral out the front but now I've just got uh, sorry, 1 over 24 3z plus 1 to the 4 minus 2 3z to the 4 plus 3z minus 1 to the 4. Where does this come from? Well, it's because when we evaluate this with a zero, we get 3z plus 1 to the 4 from this term and a minus 3z to the 4 from this term. Then when we do the minus a half, we get another minus 3z to the 4 term here, which is why we've got two of them. And then this plus 3z minus 1 to the 4 coming from this term. OK, so now we've just got a straightforward enough one dimensional integral because it's just an integral with respect to z and so we can complete that so this is just let's do the work this gives us 3z plus 1 to the 5 over 5 but I've got to multiply apply it by the 3 there minus 2 3z to the 5 over 5 again have to multiply by 3 plus 3z minus 1 to the 5 over 5 again multiplying by the 3 because I've taken the z to the the 3z to, to the power and evaluating that between 0 and 1 third so it's just a case of plugging in the numbers and what it turns out is that we get 1 over 24 times 1 over 15 because that's what the 5 over 3s are doing and then from the substituting the third and the naught in we actually get uh, 32 for the third minus 2 for the naught and so that gives us 30 over 15 times 1 over 24, which gives us an answer of 1 12th for this integral.